Hi everyone, my name is Tom Rogers. I am the author of Eleven, which is the story of a boy turning 11 on 9-11. Uh, I'll tell you more about the book in a minute, but I first just want to say thank you to the Texas Spot Committee for um, giving me the honor of including me on this list. I'm really uh, pleased about it. I um, grew up in Texas. I was, we're going low tech here. That's a picture of me when I was in grade school. I went to school in Dallas, grew up in Dallas. I went to high school there, graduated from Skyline High School in Dallas, Texas. Um, here's another picture of me. That's my dog, Pokey. He was a basset hound. I'm showing you that because um, dogs feature prominently in Eleven, and a lot of times people ask me, you know, where do you get your ideas for books? And uh, Often they come from my own past. Uh, the main character in my book has kind of an obsession with dogs. He really wants a dog for his birthday. Um, well, that comes from something that I know, from being an 11-year-old boy really wanting a dog. Um, I still have deep roots in Texas. My family's all there. My parents are there. My brother and his family, niece and nephew, all live in Texas. I frequently am back in Texas to do school visits. Uh, I was just back there last month in February, in fact, uh, to do an all-day visit in with a school in Dallas. So. I'm really pleased to have been part of this uh, select group of people to be part of Texas Spot for 2017-18. Um, I now live in Los Angeles, um, where I write for mostly film and television. Eleven was my first novel, first novel for middle schoolers. Uh, um, but I've been working in uh, TV and film for about over 20 years. Um, I'm speaking to you today from my office at Disney. Uh, where I write for a show called Elena of Avalor. You can see Elena over my shoulder there. Uh, Elena is a show on the animated show on the Disney Channel. It introduces Disney's first Latina princess. We've um, just been renewed for a third season, so I'm really proud of the work we do, really excited um, with what I'm doing there. Um, but I'm often asked, uh, how is it that somebody who is a, uh, you know, who makes pixie, writes for pixies and... Um, princesses and talking animals came to write a book about a subject as serious as 9-11. Uh, well, it started with my nephew. Uh, my nephew was about two years old in 2001 when, when the attacks of 9-11 happened. And several years later, it was the anniversary of 9-11, and he was asking me, uh, he was seeing some of the news coverage and asked me, Uncle Tom, what's the big deal about 9-11? And it kind of surprised me that he didn't know. And I began asking other friends uh, who are teachers, uh, what are you guys teaching about 9-11? And they said, we don't really teach it in the schools. Uh, it's a very emotionally difficult subject to approach, and we don't really have a good way to talk about it and to teach about it. Um, and this was kind of remarkable to me, because 9-11 is an important day both in the history of our country and also on a very personal level um, for most of us. Uh, you know, in terms of um, an event in current history, it's one of the, one of the most world-changing events that we've experienced in our lifetime, those of us who are old enough to remember it. It has, it has involved us in at least two military conflicts in the Middle East. It continues to um, directly affect our relations with countries in the Middle East and with conflicts there. It's changed the way we think about security. If you've ever flown through an airport, all of the security apparatus where you have to take off your belt and your shoes and put your stuff through the luggage conveyor and walk through the x-ray machine, almost all of that came about as a direct result of 9-11. used to be you could just walk right up to your airplane gate before then. So it's an important thing to know about because of the way it's um, influenced the current world that we live in, but it's also an important on a personal level. All of us who went through that day remember that day in, in incredible detail. I can remember exactly where I was when I found out the news about the attacks on the Twin Towers. I remember every moment of that afternoon looking out my window at downtown Los Angeles wondering if more planes were going to be flying into those buildings, thinking about my best friend back in New York City who I couldn't reach that day, finding out if he was okay. And if you talk to your teachers or parents, people who were alive on that day, you will find that they remember that day, 9-11, in very, very specific detail. I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday, but this event over 15 years ago is still very strongly implanted in my memory. So it's important that students like you, middle schoolers, who weren't even born in 2001, to you it's just history, but it's important that you know about this day. Um, so I started to think about how do we 
uh, how am I going to tell a story about such a difficult time? Well, I began thinking about how other examples of authors who have used storytelling as a way to approach really, really difficult subjects. So, for example, um, there's a book called Number the Stars by Lois Lowry. Some of you may have read, um, or you might have read Anne Frank's Diary of a Young Girl, which is nonfiction. It's her actual diary. But these two books are often read in middle school curricula, and they are about the Holocaust, one of the most um, horrifying events to ever happen in probably all of world history. It's the attempted extermination of the Jews by the Nazis during World War II. Um, not a lightweight subject at all. Um, you might have read or seen the movie The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. This is a book about a girl with cancer, a terminal illness. Um, or there's my, one of my favorite books of all time, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Um, or even a book by another writer on the, this year's Texas Spot List. Gary Paulson wrote a book called Night John. These books tackle the subjects of slavery and racial discrimination in our country. Um, again, these are not lightweight subjects, but they were subjects that the authors had confidence that younger readers could tackle. They had respect for their audience and a belief that um, it's important to begin to think about uh, ways in which the world isn't always just or fair, and more importantly, to think about how do we respond to events like this. So I began to think about what did I want to say about 9-11? Um, because, still going low tech here, um, it's important that you know the facts of the day. So how these twin towers were reduced to rubble in a matter of seconds. That's an important fact as well. But what's also important is how people responded to this tragedy. They responded with incredible courage and kindness. Volunteers showed up from all over the country and around the world, even some four-legged volunteers. These are canine search and rescue dogs who came to the scene at Ground Zero to assist in the rescue operations. So I wanted to show that uh, you know one of the measures of who we are as human beings is how we respond to tragedy. And I began to think about, well, what was it like to be a kid on that day? Lots of stories have been told of what it was like to be a first responder or somebody on one of the planes that was hijacked. Um, and those are difficult, important stories, but I don't ha really have anything to add to that. But I can talk about what it's like to be a kid because, as you remember, I was a kid. When I was 11, I used to dream, daydream about being a hero. It was all I cared about. Running into burning buildings and saving all the pretty girls so they would love me forever. And you, as you get older, you realize that that's a pretty unrealistic idea of what it means to be a hero, but you also begin to develop maybe a more mature idea of what it means to be a hero, to um, take responsibility for others, to rise to the occasion when you're challenged. Um, and so I wrote this story. It's about a boy named Alex Douglas. He's about to turn 11. He really wants a dog for his birthday, and he has a huge fight the night before his birthday with his parents. And he tells his father in anger, I hate you. And the next day, his dad goes off to work, and Alex goes off to school. Nobody knows what's going to happen this day, but this day happens to be September 11th, 2001. And so the story is about Alex coming to discover what has happened, and thinking about his dad, who works at the World Trade Center, and wondering if he's going to come home, and realizing that until he finds out, he is going to have to take care of people who would normally depend on his parents. He's going to have to take care of his little sister, he rescues a stray dog, take care, takes care of him. He even meets uh, an old man on his journey who is waiting for his son to come home. Um, and those two bond over their sense of uh, fear and loss and hope. Um, and so that's what 9-11 is about. Um, since it was, uh, that's what 11 is about. Since 11 was published, I'm very proud to say it's been taught all over uh, the country. And in fact, um, I've done lots of school visits around the country and also by video chat, uh, not only around the country, but around the globe. I've done video chats in England and Beijing, China, and Hanoi, Vietnam, many other places. So that's been exciting um, to get to meet people from around the world. Um, and one of my proudest moments was I did a book signing at the 9-11 Museum in Manhattan, um, where they carry the book in their bookstore. So that's, uh, that's something that made me very proud. Um, that's enough of me talking. I hope you like the book. I can't wait for the school year to begin so that we can uh, get together and talk about it some more. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you in Texas soon. Bye-bye.